Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the CNC Q2. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this review because maybe like a month or so ago I put out a video warning people about how CNC tried to buy a five-star review off of me. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I show basically the text message conversation that I had between CNC and myself. So instead of just telling people that this company is dishonest, I figured I'd buy one of their most popular machines and do a non-biased review on it. To start out, the price of the CNC Q2 is $199.45 on the actual CNC website. But if you go on Amazon, you can find it for $100. $80.99. I'm not really sure why the price discrepancy, but either way, you can find it cheaper if you don't buy it on their website. When I first got this machine, I was surprised by the way that it felt. I was expecting a junky little machine, but it actually feels pretty well built. Along with the machine in the box, you get these two extra O-rings and an Allen key along with an RCA cable. Now, the RCA cable is super thin. It's like a headphone cable. Compared to the one that I usually use, which is the FK Irons RCA cable, this is very flimsy. It doesn't look like it's gonna hold up well over time with bending. This thing, I've had this for like three and a half years and it still works really well. Whenever I get a new machine in the mail, I'm always excited to take it out of the box, plug it in, get a test cartridge, and listen to what it sounds like for the first time, just to see how it runs. So that's exactly what I did with this machine. I plugged it in, got a test cartridge, put the test cartridge into the grip, and this is where things started to go downhill. The test cartridge got stuck halfway up the grip and it would not come out. So I was pulling on it and I pulled so hard that I pulled the cartridge completely apart. The stem of the cartridge along with the needles were stuck in the machine and then I was holding the plastic tube part of the cartridge in my other hand. So I thought maybe that this was my fault that I put the cartridge in crooked or something. I took the grip off, got a pair of pliers, I got the stem out of the grip and then I got another test cartridge and it happened again. I tried out five brands of cartridges and only two actually fit into the grip and only one out of those two actually fit comfortably. The other one I had a really push up in there and then it was also really difficult to get out. So let me show you. Test number one. Here is a needle jig cartridge and here is the Q2 and this is the Axis Valker. The needle jig cartridge does not fit in the Q2. Goes right into the Valker. Test number two. Here's a T-Tech cartridge. It goes in a little bit farther than the needle jig cartridge but then gets stuck. Goes right into the Valker. Here's a good guy tattoo supply cartridge. This one won't even go past the rim. Oh, there we go. It happened in real time. Comes right apart. But that one does fit into the Valker. Then this is a big sleeps cartridge. This is from Tat Soul, and it does fit in to the Q2, but you have to really push it in there, and then you have to really pull it out. But it goes right into the Valker. So, the other brand that does work is Black Claw. Um, those work right into here and also work into here. But those are all major brands of cartridges and they don't fit into here. So the statement on their website that says accepts all major cartridge brands should say maybe your cartridges will fit. Maybe not. Besides this grip not wanting to fit any of my cartridges, I do like the way that it spins. It's very smooth and it has a clicking mechanism to make sure that the uh, grip won't move while you're tattooing. Moving on to some specs. The Q2's diameter is 30 millimeters and its height is 95 millimeters, weighing in at 108 grams. The Q2 sports a fall halber motor and the recommended operating voltage is anywhere from six to eight volts. They do warn you not to go above 10 volts. The machine comes with a 3.5 millimeter stroke right out of the box, but they also have a three millimeter and a four millimeter stroke available for purchase. Moving on to noise and vibration, I'm going to show you what the machine sounds like within its recommended voltage parameters. So this is six volts. Quiet, very low vibration. This is really nice actually when it comes to noise and vibration. That is seven volts and that is eight volts. There really is no change in noise or vibration the entire time. Now, between a wired and wireless connection, that really is up to you on how you like to tattoo. Uh, it doesn't really change the balance of the machine at all. It just depends on how free you like to be. Personally, I like to be wireless because then that way I am free to do whatever I want. Uh, wired, wireless, whatever you want it'll work. The balance of this machine really reminds me of the Bishop wand. If you've ever used that, uh, when you're holding it, it barely pops out of the top of your hand. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> 
So any type of back weight is gonna come from the RCA or the battery, and that really isn't any. Next, let's talk about bagability. The Q2 is very easy to bag up, just like the Bishop wand. All you have to do is throw it down a clipcord cover, wrap it up with some grip tape, however thick you want the grip. You pop a hole in the clipcord cover for your cartridge to go into the grip, and you are pretty much set. Next, let's talk about ease of cleaning. The outside of this pen machine is very smooth and easy to wipe down. Uh, they do not offer disposable grips that I was able to find, so that is a negative for me. I would rather use disposable grips. And just like most pen machines on the market, it can be a cross-contamination hazard if you do not clean up inside of the machine. Fortunately, you are able to unscrew the back of the machine. You're able to fully access the push rod. You're able to fully clean the housing of this machine after every tattooing session. And finally, what everybody wants to know, is it good for lining? Is it good for shading? And should you buy this machine? Starting off with lining, I found myself very frustrated when I was trying to line with this machine. The 3.5 millimeter stroke is not ideal at all for lining. It doesn't offer the power that I like when trying to get in one pass lines. With the four millimeter stroke, you will get a little bit more power out of it, but I still don't see this being a very good lining machine. So if you're looking for a liner, definitely look elsewhere. The only time that I was using this for lining was with an extra tight three, and I was using gray wash to be able to save parts of my stencil, but those lines don't even have to be solid. I'm basically kind of just scratching in little guidelines for me to shade later. Next, is it good for shading or color packing? Gray shading was really the only area that I found that this machine excelled at. The 3.5 millimeter stroke was powerful enough to put my gray wash in, but soft enough to be able to get smooth gradients. With color packing, color blending, and black work, you could do it. Um, I would like a harder hit out of a machine for doing solid work like that. That is the way that I like to tattoo. Everybody is different, but I would say for solid color or solid black, you're gonna want a harder hitting machine than this. Lastly, should you buy this machine? Uh, if you're looking for a backup shader machine or just a black and gray machine and you're on a budget, sure, go for it. Black and gray is where this machine excels at and I think that's really the only thing that it's good for. You might not be able to fit your cartridges in the machine though, so hopefully you have more than one brand to try out. But based on CNC's business practices and my experience with this machine, I would say save your money for a better machine and a better company. The Q2 is going to sit in my drawer and I'm probably never going to use it again unless all of my other machines break and I have no money to buy another one. So there you have it. What other machines would you like to see me review? I have two more machines I am testing out right now and I'm going to be doing reviews on. And then after that, I'm on the search for new machines to check out. So let me know what you would like to see reviewed. I hope that this video is helpful to you and I hope that you have a good day.